you could see the detail and the attention he put in everything. What was the difference between that CBS show, Have Gun, Will Travel, and the way Jim Arness was on Gunsmoke? Welcome to A Word on Western. Today we have the son of one of the great film directors, and this son did like a hundred TV shows, and a lot of them were Westerns. And we're going to talk about them today. Would you please welcome William Wellman, Jr. Hey, Rob. How are you, Bill? Good. How are you? Thanks for being here. Well, uh, just a minute ago, I had mentioned Jack Lambert, and I know you did a Gunsmoke episode where he was just this meanest guy. What do you remember about Dear Jack? Well, it was my first Western, and I didn't see him. I didn't know he was in the show. It was the first day. We're shooting um, on the, uh, in a set, and uh, I get all, I'm in my wardrobe and, you know, and made up, and I'm ready to go. And the director, Andy McLaughlin, says, now, Bill, in this scene, I just want you to walk across the street to the saloon. And the bad guy is going to be coming the other way, so I want you to look. You know he's a bad guy, and I want you to look, you know, frightened. I thought, okay, I think I can do this. So then I never saw who this person was until the action. And I start across the street, and here comes Jack Lambert. Now, I had seen him playing these terrible Nazis in war <laughs> films and the worst bad guys in westerns, and it's, he scared the hell out of me. And as I'm walking, he's coming right to me, and I'm looking at him, and he gives me that sneer, you know, and he goes right by me, and I, I barely could get across the street. And the director says, cut. And he said, Bill. God, that was great. You really look scared. I said, I am scared. <laughs> I, and I never, I, wherever, if he moved, you know, over there, I went over here. I never talked to him. Uh, I, I was scared the whole show. And he, and he pushes you aside, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, he pushed me aside. Well, I was, I was out of it. Obviously, Andy McLaughlin liked your performance with Jack Lambert because he used you several other times on, uh, on, on Gunsmoke, and I think, didn't he direct some of the Have Gun, Will Travels he did? Yeah, that's, that's the, I connected with him really on, uh, well, the Gunsmoke, which I think was, was first, but on the Have Gun, which, you know, I was, <laughs> I started out, when I was an actor, I was 19 going on 16. I didn't know what the hell was going on. I, I was trying to learn, desperately try. I mean, I was going, taking three acting classes a week. One of them was a comedy class, and I'm not funny. But I was doing everything that I could think of. I went to a gym, I, you know, I did everything. And um, I was trying desperately. I was gonna make, you know, make a place for myself in this business. So anyway, I thought, well, if I'm going to be a working actor, I'm going to be doing westerns. You know, it's the late 1950s now, and westerns are starting to be everywhere. So I went and bought a black hat and a black shirt and black jeans and black boots and a six-gun, you know, and a holster. And I had these very posed pictures taken that a few years later, a, a director said to me, Bill, stop taking those pictures around. <laughs> So anyway, I get an audition for Have Gun, and I put the black outfit on with the gun and everything, and I go in like that, and also the photograph, an eight by 10, and I walk into the audition, and there's Paladin. He's at the audition. Now, in all the years that I've been in the business, I never saw a star of a series sitting in a casting session, but Richard Boone was all over. His, his fingerprints were everywhere on that show. Okay, he's in there looking at me, and he's looking at the picture, and he's looking at me dressed in my black outfit. And he says to me, hey kid, nobody dresses in black on this show except me. 
<laughs> oh, geez, I thought I really, I thought I really blew it. And I called my agent, you know, and I said, boy, I think I really blew that paladin, didn't like me, you know. I, well, I get the job and it's the young lead on the show. And he was laughing when I'm doing the show. And each show, I think the last show I did was maybe four years later after the first one. And he still would say, hey, kid, you still got that black outfit? <laughs> <laughs> and then it all, it dawned on me, I think I got the role because I had the black outfit on. You know. So you still got those photos to pass <laughs> out then. Well, yeah, I had the photos and I thought, you know, I knew they were phony and posed. And, but when I do Western shows, those are my best sellers. Mm -hmm. That phony with the gun out, the, the gunfighter. A lot of fun, though, wasn't you know. it? You know? <laughs> well, you know, Richard Boone, you said he, he was hands on on his show and he directed a lot. And, and, and it was. And you could see the detail and the uh, attention he put in everything. What was the difference between that CBS show, Have Gun, Will Travel, and the way Jim Arness was on Gunsmoke. Yeah, well, that's funny. I, I, like I say, you know, I'm just this young guy trying to figure it all out. And Boone is, he's talking to the director. He's talking, you know, I heard that he r helped write the script and he'll, he'll sit down with the actors and do rehearsals. I mean, he's all over the place. Now I do Gunsmoke. And I remember the first time that I met Jim Arnaz. And before I met him, we're shooting in a, in a soundstage. And I'm there and I'm ready to shoot. And in comes Arnaz. And he walks in and he's like from me to that gentleman over there. And he says, calls the script supervisor over and he says, <clears throat> what's this show about? <laughs> and she said, well, this is the show where, you know, the gunfighter comes to town and before you meet him, you go into the saloon, you talk to Kitty and, you know, and I'm thinking, he hasn't read the show. And he says, what are, what, what are they going to shoot? What's the first scene they're going to shoot? And so she, script supervisor, opens the pages and she said, okay, here's the scene. And he's, he looks at it, he says, let me see. And he's looking and he says, um, he reads, he says, I don't want to say that. Cross that out. Uh, I don't want to say that. I'll say the rest of it. And then he goes over and he sits down. Now his stand-in, they called him Tiny. He was a great big guy. And they would play a card game. He would wait until the director decided to have him come in for a rehearsal. I just worked have gun where Boone is all over the place. And Jim Arnaz, but what came across as a great spontaneity. It was perfect, but I'm thinking, I'm still trying to get, a, get an idea of what the hell's going on in this world of acting. And I couldn't figure it out. I, I did a Pony Express, which was only one season, and they had this Grant, William, uh, Grant Sullivan was his name. Great looking guy, real rugged looking guy. He was a stage actor from New York the last thing he was going to do was get on a horse. He said, no, I don't like horses. And I'm thinking, what is going on? And a show called Pony Express. Pony Express. <laughs> well, you did a lot of different shows that Andy McLaughlin directed, too. And uh, he was part of the Hollywood families. Uh, you know, his dad was an Oscar winner. He was hanging out with John Ford and, uh, and, and Dobie Carey as, as a youngster. When you were growing up, did you know these guys? Did you know Andy? No, I, I, di I didn't know him. Um, but there was all kinds of celebrities in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I right. mean, my neighborhood was, let's say, two streets to the east, two streets to the west, and seven blocks north of Sunset. That was the neighborhood. There was Henry Fonda, Gary Cooper, Tyrone Power, Van Johnson, the Andrew sisters, John Payne, married to Glory DeHaven, Robert uh, Walker, married to Jennifer Jones, Nelson Eddy, married to Liberace, <laughs> uh, Frank Capra, there was Red Skelton, Peter Lawford, uh, Xavier Cougat, Bob Crosby, Bing Crosby's <laughs> brother, and, and my favorite, Hopalong Cassidy. Wow, Bill Boyd. 
So what kind of neighborhood barbecues did you guys have there? Well, until I was about 12 or 13, I thought these people were in everybody's neighborhood. Uh, so that was my neighborhood. Wow. And kids your age, though, did they have kids that you played with? Who'd you hang oh, yeah. out with? I know you're one of seven kids, I think. Well, Jane Fonda was my first girlfriend. Woo! Keenan Wynn was in the neighborhood, too, and I, and I played with his sons. And, uh, you know, they were, you know, the Walker boys. Uh, we all hung out. Maria Cooper, Gary Cooper's mm -hmm. daughter. And that was, that was a little difficult because Gary Cooper and my father were close friends. My father really started him in Wings or got him his, mm -hmm. his big role. And uh, they always felt like I should be with Maria. So anytime we had birthday parties together, they would always sit me right next to Maria. <laughs> and it, it made me very uncomfortable. And I think it made her uncomfortable. I still see her. She's a great gal. Yeah, I've but been it, pissed it, off Jane Fonda, though. Well. <laughs> That's another story. <laughs> well, that's the story we want to hear. She was far too mature for me. Oh. <laughs> she, she liked to play kissing games, and I was eight years old, you know, nine years old, and, and, and I... How, I old was, how much older is she than you? She's not older than I. She's maybe Just a year younger. Maybe more advanced. Oh, she was more advanced. Okay. And I, I didn't see her, you know, when her, her mother committed suicide, and they left the neighborhood. They went back east. And I, when I hooked up with her again, we were 18. And we went out uh, and dated a little bit. And she was always a captivating mm -hmm. person. But, you know, our dates were, she'd be talking about intellectual pursuits and Broadway shows and, you know, great literature. And I'd be talking about baseball and mom's apple pie, and you know, <laughs> we weren't we weren't really aligned, shall we say? My name is Rob Word, and we love bringing these programs to you. We've got a lot more scheduled coming up. We post a new one every single week, and we want you to subscribe, like, and share. Thanks for watching.